Hey folks, I got a couple of clips for you today. They're news clips from around 2000, the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018. It's a couple of Second Amendment auditors that thought it was a good idea to strap up and uh, go to the police station and just charge right in there and uh, demand their right to carry a gun in the police station. So we're going to check that out. It didn't work out well for them, but uh, they tried it anyway. This is why, uh, this is what gives gun owners a bad name, people. Put that on the ground! Put it on the ground! Put it on the ground! Tense, frightening moments inside the Dearborn Police Station when armed and masked men storm into the lobby. We'll start there tonight at 6. The response from police who saw heavily armed men walking into the Dearborn Police Station the officers ready to protect themselves. The stunt was all recorded on cell phones and GoPro cameras by three men. Two of them were arrested. Rod Maloney live with the story tonight. And Rod, this started over what the, these men believed was an illegal or inappropriate traffic stop. Yes, it, it was a traffic stop. And Devin, I got to tell you, the video you're about to see is simply startling. It's frightening on pretty much every level. And the original call came in yesterday afternoon that some shoppers in Dearborn saw some men getting out of a car, putting on masks and Kevlar. They were very concerned about that. They called the police, so the police went to the store. Well, they didn't find the men, but they got a description of the car, and there was a traffic stop a few minutes later. The men recorded the traffic stop and posted it on YouTube. This is what it went like. Let me go on my way. Let me be free to go because we've done, we've broken no laws. You know this. This is a, an illegal detention at this point. You, you better get because well, we're done. If you wish to file a complaint. Oh, I will file a complaint. One of the men who posted this YouTube video of their traffic stop wore his mask during that stop. The other didn't. They immediately made good on the promise to file a complaint. We felt uh, a little afraid for our lives when we were pulled over, so. Okay, so they can get a little attention for themselves. They put on masks, they get out of a car, start uh, strapping on guns, and walk into a, uh, a public uh, public place. And they don't think that the police are going to be called, or they don't think that looks suspicious. Bullshit's what I say. They did it intentionally, but they're going to pay the consequences for it. We figure we better protect ourselves. So they walked into the Dearborn Police Department headquarters with long guns drawn around their necks and masks on, video cameras rolling, and received the greeting you might expect. Dude, put that on the ground! Put it on the ground! ground. I will put around it, you sir! Especially considering Detroit saw this kind of shootout at a precinct about six years ago. At this point, only the audio is available. I what the hell's the matter with you? Can we all calm down? Put it down! Barrel down, set it down, step back. Now, to be honest, if you think that this is the way to protect Second Amendment rights in the United States, you're a frickin' idiot. Dearborn police arrested the two men, and Lieutenant Gary Mann says on-duty officers showed considerable restraint. I think in a lot of situations, there would have been officers that would have fired at these men. The weapon one of the men had was an AP-14, a pistol fitted with a long gun barrel and stock, one very dangerous weapon. You all know what an auditor named uh, OKC Tim. He got arrested with uh, PayPal Patty and Floyd Wallace for conspiring to call 911 and uh, create a problem so that they could sue the city or something like that. Well, they all got convicted of that. Anyway, OKC Tim thought it was a smart idea to go to a public park to a Little League baseball game and show kids how the Second Amendment was legal and that you have a right to bear arms. In front of the kids, he's waving around this gun, so it didn't work out well for him either. The police were very concerned about it. Has a 7.62 caliber round, um, which is similar to what an AK-47 would have. I'm going to insert a short clip of something that happened here in Dallas about five or six years ago. It was a, a bunch of police were shot and killed. A bunch of bystanders and police were shot intentionally in an ambush of police officers. That's why uh, police officers are on such a uh, guard for themselves. No justice! No peace! No At 6 p.m., no hundreds no gather peacefully no in downtown no Dallas no to no protest no the two no recent no fatal no police no shootings no of black no men. No Some protesters even taking photos with Dallas PD showing their solidarity. Then at 8.45, just a mile from City Hall, shots ring out. Officers scramble to secure the scene. Shot fired. 
Shots fired. Moving protesters out of harm's way. We got shots fired. Get out of here. The shots grow. There was a sniper on the on the rooftop waiting for the police. Shot 11 of them and uh, killed five of them. That, that's why the police are on uh, such guard for themselves. It's absolutely ridiculous these guys would do something like this anyway. Now, these men are advocates of open carry laws, but there's also an organization called Open Carry Michigan. They called the police department, the Dearborn police chief, and told him that they in no way are associated with these guys, do not condone what they did, and in fact, they think that what they did was very dangerous and not very smart. Back to you. So, so Rod, they took them into custody there. Um, what about charges now? Okay, uh, they, right now we're talking misdemeanor charges of, of having the weapons in the building. There's talk about whether there's an ordinance about having a mask on your face. That's something that they're looking yeah, at right yeah. now. Uh, but they're also talking to prosecutors about other charges because when they took the guns away from the men, there were well over 100 rounds of ammunition, a handgun and another long gun in addition to that AP-14. So this is far from over. And did you get a chance to talk to them, Ron? Well, I called, I got the phone number of the guy who posted the video and I reached out to him. He texted me back and said he has nothing to say at this point. Yeah. All right, Rod, what a story. Rod Maloney reporting live from Dearborn. Okay, that was the arrest part. Uh, the second part is what happened to them after that in 2018. I believe this occurred in 2017. I think that's when all those cops in Dallas were shot, if I'm not mistaken. It was about five years ago. Five or six cops and some civilians got shot down there in uh, Dallas, Texas, for a guy who just wanted to kill cops. Anyway, let's see what happened to him. Two armed men who stormed the Dearborn Police Department defending their open carry rights were sentenced today. Now they're going to jail. 7 Action News reporter Gino Vici is in the newsroom with how long they'll be behind bars. Gino. Well, guys, remember, this was the video that had even the most loyal open carry advocates saying, what were these guys thinking? Now, the interesting thing about this case, one of the defendants, James Baker, is headed to jail for not what he did side inside the police department, but what for the two incriminating themselves in a Facebook live video two hours entering before entering PD with guns, body armor and ski masks. Before I go on, I want, I want to say I am uh, in favor of the Second Amendment. I'm in favor of all the amendments, the United States Constitution. I, I don't uh, I don't represent it the way these clowns did. They Facebook lived it. They uploaded their crimes to a social media network. So tell me this wasn't for attention, please. James Baker and Brandon Vreeland's video of the two storming into the Dearborn Police Department went viral. The two men were open carrying. Baker also wearing a ski mask. He was convicted of carrying a concealed weapon, but was found not guilty of brandishing a firearm and disturbing the peace. But the same jury found Vreeland guilty of both. In terms of looking at this in terms of the entire totality of the circumstances, it was intentionally <laughs> provocative. And frankly, they're both lucky they're alive. Judge Miriam Bazzi questioning what their intentions were. By referencing a conversation Baker and Vreeland recorded moments after being confronted by a Dearborn police officer two hours before they entered PD armed. They're both lucky that the Dearborn police officers that were present that day had the patience and the demeanor to not shoot them, particularly in the atmosphere that exists and what's happening with police officers throughout the country. Judge Bazzi stating Vreeland and Baker ultimately put their lives at risk, as well as the officers inside the Dearborn Police Department. Judge Bazzi stating probation was simply not enough. I don't think straight probation is appropriate for either one of these individuals. Well, Baker was sentenced to nine months of the Wayne County Jail. Remember, he was found not guilty of brandishing a firearm and disturbing the peace, but was found guilty of carrying a concealed weapon. Now, Vreeland was found guilty on all three charges. He was sentenced to nine months to five years at the Michigan Department of Corrections. Their attorneys say they'll be appealing the case. In the newsroom, Gino Vici, 7 Action News. All right. I would say they went about uh, seeking fame on social media the wrong way. I don't know. Look at this snotty little kid walking around, the kid with the glasses, and the other guy with the beard. And uh, they set Second Amendment rights back probably 20 years doing that stunt. I mean, people do this ridiculous nonsense all the time. It, it's absolutely stupid. It's so uh, sit type stuff. Anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.